What's up, you guys? I know what you guys are thinking. Another side deck video? Don't these get old? I know, I know. Don't worry, though. I'm not giving you guys a top anything. No top five, no top 10, no top 100, no top anything having to do with side decking. What we're gonna talk about today though is how to properly side deck for this format. One thing I have discovered, and I will admit that in the last deck profile I did, uh, playing that horrible Dino Thunder deck that I played, that I was sick as a dog, played it, played terrible, got lucky as anything, and got some points for the UDS, it taught me something that I definitely wanted to make into a video, and it's talking about citing the proper cards that cover the most matches, and that is what we're going to talk about today. I hope that it's informative. I hope that it gives you guys a lot to think about. It's definitely something I have learned and am continuing to learn uh, as I play this game, uh, you know, on the local level, competitive level, regional level, YCS, etc., etc. And what we're going to do is, again... I know this is going to get a little repetitive, but we're going to talk about what I feel are the five best decks. Now, I originally had Trick Stars at number five, and, you know, shout out to Bortle. You guys already saw the deck profile. That man is insane with Trick Stars. Definitely check out his channel. He always records with me and Johnny um, at the YCS. He's very competitive, does very well with the deck, and I usually would put that deck at number five. However, the only reason I'm not putting it in this category is because I've noticed Prank Kids is a higher representation, and we already know this is because of Milan. We also know that the deck, you know, does have its issues, but I do have at the number five spot along with the usual suspects of uh sky strikers thunder dragons multi uh multi-figure deck the alter guys deck and the rongo deck but that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about the best cards that you can side you know for these matches but that can also overlap for other matches and i feel that by doing that we really utilize the side deck because i'll be honest with you guys i hate side decking i've said it many times side decking is a art form that very few people like master like you can learn it you can do well with it but to truly master it it takes years and i'm still learning it you guys i'll be the first to admit that side decking has been one of the hardest things for me over the years and every format you know it changes it changes to where like you need cards that you didn't need before cards that you haven't played in years come back and you're just like oh like you know how do i you know how do i adapt to you know these different decks but what we're gonna go over is we're gonna start at the very base we're gonna start with sky strikers now the most common thing about Sky Strikers is that you don't really care about the monsters. And I say that because I know a lot of people like Winter Cherries. I know a lot of people like cards like that. But I noticed when playing that deck, all you have to do is cut them off from Ray. Now, ways you cut them off from Ray is simple. You know, you just keep punching into their monsters till Ray, you know, just exhausts its, its revival tactics. You know, you punch through their links. Their links are not as scary as everyone thinks. Hayate is just a pain in the ass. Let's be honest. Hayate is a pain in the ass. It just punches you and, you know, that sucks. But the way you really beat them is you deplete their back row. Now, there are two cards that are just the best cards to side for this matchup. And the beauty of siding them for this matchup is that you can use them pretty much against any kind of deck that has back row. And our number three deck of the format, Alter Geist, also has back row. These two cards, should come as no surprise, are Twin Twisters and Evenly Matched. If you side both these cards, you are covered in two matches, not just one. And I think that that's something that not enough players utilize. It is definitely something I did not utilize. And I found out the hard way that, man, you know, I'm dedicating cards solely for one matchup where I could use something generic in a sense, like, you know, these two cards, and I'd be covered in two matches. And that's something I really, really wanted to, you know, stress in this video is that by using cards like Twin Twisters and Evenly Matched, you're getting rid of the back row, you're getting rid of the problem, and you're covering two matches. These six cards, if you side them at full sets each, you can side against not only this deck, but also against Altergeist, and you can also side them against decks like Trickstar, you can side them against rogue decks like True Draco. Any decks that have back row, you can side them in. This is also really good against Prank Kids, because Evenly Matched hits the Prank Kids field. So if you look at it like that, the card's great. Another thing about Evenly Matched, you can use it against Rongo. And you guys are like, really? Yeah, you can. If they have anything plus Rongo, you know, get that off the board. They lose their resources, and then you just kind of have to stall out the Rongo in order to win. So, I know I'm still sick. Sorry, guys. But, uh, yeah, I still have to do a phase video. I know I'm, I'm sick. But, um, yeah, so that's something is that that is the first thing is that when you look at it, siding cards that you can really utilize are the best. And I really like this. I like the fact that you can use, you know, 
multiple cards for multiple matches and i feel that by doing that you really do you know get the most value out of your side deck like i want you guys to walk away from this video and say i got some valuable information on the value of my side deck you only have 15 cards it sounds like a lot it's not 15 cards is nothing like it's nothing and the ability to you know at least get the most value out of it the most bang for your buck in a sense is awesome so when it comes to sky strikers those are the two main cards i talk about you another card you could throw into this uh lineup would be uh dino wrestler prankatops i like this card also because you can use it against this matchup as well you could use this almost against any matchup i know it's kind of crazy but a card like this is good against striker because you can punch into the link punch into the ray pop off the ray pop off some back row you know it's it you can't they'll never widow anchor it because you're always going to chain off of it so uh cards great also really good against ultra guys punch over an ultra guys monster pop a back row etc etc you guys already know so these three cards prankatops twisters evenly match are your best bets when playing against a deck like um sky strikers and our altar guys and that's what i want you guys to remember is that we're grouping these decks to be able to get the most value in our side deck so next we have thunder dragons now thunder dragons is a very weird deck and i say that because the cards you would side against them you can't really side against that many other decks unlike sky strikers they're not really a back row deck now yes they will side in floodgates if your deck does lose to a floodgate you do need to side back row removal but we're not going to talk about that we're going to talk about just in general how to beat the deck you need to side cards that are not like twin twisters evenly matched yes evenly matched very good against the deck you evenly them they lose you know multiple fusions you know that does help a lot again evenly matched is probably going to be the most valuable card in your side deck because it's it's just good against everything a good good against all five of these decks across the board so evenly match is an all-star like this whole video is just like why evenly match is so ridiculous like yeah um Another thing is that you look at cards like Book of Eclipse, you look at cards like Swords of Concealing Light, you look at cards like um, Super Poly, Mind Control, all these things. Now, those cards are cool, but Super Poly, you never use it against Sky Striker, you never use it against Alter Guys, you don't use it against Prank Kids, you don't use it against Rongo Bongo, you don't use it against like any of these decks really. I, I mean, I haven't seen it. Um, and you know, Book of Eclipse is cool. Like I mentioned in the Dino Thunder deck that you know you can book them and you know you can you know interrupt their combos, but at the end of the day, you still draw cards. And I mean it's not it's not the best thing. But one thing that you can side that I really like is Artifact Lancia. And Artifact Lancia has multiple applications is that you can use it against Thunder Dragons, you can also use it against Rongo. This card is insane against Rongo. When we get to the Rongo deck, I'll talk about it, but this card's insane. Being able to, um, you know, stop the Thunder Dragons from banishing is amazing. Being able to, when they go Gold Sark and you just, you just, um, you just Lancia, you know, like, it's it's insane. Like, they lose so much advantage. Uh, not being able to get their best effects off is crazy. Yes, they might be able to end on a Colossus, but it's still not as strong. Trust me, it's not. I played under it. It sucks. Uh, other things with this deck is that, you know, the other cards I've talked about, like Swords of Concealing and Book of Eclipse, you know, again, they're not cards you're really going to side against other decks. <clears throat> When you think of hand traps, though, these are cards that should already be in your deck somewhere. Ash is amazing. Bell is amazing. Um, and Permanence is kind of like whatever. Like, and Permanence is good if you're trying to shut off the Colossus or the Titan. But, I mean, again, these are cards that should already be in your deck. Bell, not so much. Bell might be more of a side deck card. And Bell is more tailored towards the Thunder Dragon deck. But, again, it has applications against the Sky Striker deck because you're able to hit Kagari, which is awesome. So little things like that i think what you guys need to understand is getting the most value out of your side deck getting the most value out of cards that are not just for one matchup i think is really really important uh thunder dragons overall though those are like the main ways is just shut off the colossus you know stop them from banishing and you know you're pretty much good to go there aren't many cards i would really talk about because like cards like mind control yes mind control is amazing against uh thunder dragons it's okay against strikers i think it's good against strikers like in the mirror match of course and again of course a deck that links a lot but overall like the main reason people are signing mind control these days is to out the colossus so it's not really something i would see every deck playing but if you do play it realize that it could keyword could have multiple applications across the board so uh i kept it pretty simple with thunder dragons and on to alter guys now this is another really simple one because we've already talked about it twin twisters evenly matched prank atops best cards against this deck the only other card i'm going to talk about is red reboot now here's the thing with red reboot when I played Dino Thunder, I love this card. I love this card because if you're an OTK deck, you just blow them out of the water with this card. If you're a deck like Rongo that just needs to set up through all their back row, play this card. Twin Twister, yes, it does cost you a card to pull out two back row, which is fine. 
but Red Reboot is really good in decks that just need to set up a win condition, that just need to push through with their OTK, and just need to you know plow through all the back row at once and don't care about the life point differential. Being able to do that is insane. I think that a lot of people, you know, under myself included, underestimated Red Reboot, but the card is insane. However, the card is not that good against Sky Strikers. It's not that good against Thunder Dragons. It's not that good against Rongo. Uh, Prank Kids, I don't think it's that good against Prank Kids. Like, you see, it has only one real application, and that's against Ultra Geist and, I guess, True Draco or any kind of trap decks like Paleo, etc. But cards like Twin Twister and Evenly, you can use them against Paleo as well. So... Again, when it comes to these decks, side cards that are the, you know, most versatile cards around. So, we've already mentioned that. We've mentioned Prankatops. We've mentioned Evenly. we mentioned Twin. Those are your best cards against Alter Guys. Red Re Reboot, again, solely for decks that can OTK and that can just need to push through all the traps at once to get to their win condition. Next, we have Rongo, the dreaded Rongo. I'm not even going to mention XYZ Encore, and I'm not going to mention Herald of the Abyss. I'm not going to mention anything like that where people are just trying to hit the wrong go because you need more versatile cards. And I noticed that, again, Lancia, one of the best cards, like one of the best cards, you guys. And if you're not um, side decking this card, depending on what hand traps you play, um, Impermanence, Ghost Ogre, hand traps, Gamma, hand traps. That is the key. What I really like about Impermanence and I really like about Ogre is that they do have applications against other matches. I'm going to focus mainly, mainly on these two because we've already talked about Lancia. I think Lancia is an all-star and should be in your side deck. End of story. The card's amazing. What I like about Ogre and I like about Impermanence is that you can stop the Summon Sword, you can stop Azold, etc., etc. You know, of course, Ash, the second effect of Azold, etc., and I really like that. I like that you can just ogre the summon sorc. I think that's so strong. And permanencing the summon sorc is so strong. Being able to do all those plays is so strong. I was wrong originally when I said, you know, you want to wait for the bamboozling to get there. No, because the bamboozling has an effect that can negate the ogre, negate whatever. So don't do that. I was incorrect and I apologize. That was the wrong information. Um, but being able to stop them before they even get that far is the key to beating this deck. Ogring summon source, uh, the summon source, and permanencing the summon source. A Lancia at any time is just insane. It cuts them off from so many resources. Their sword doesn't float, etc. It's insane. So cards like that, really good against this deck. And you see, what I want you guys to remember is that we're not just focusing on Rongo itself. We're focusing on preventing it from even happening. Prevent Rongo from them even getting to the step of Rongo and number 75, and you're going to do well, and you're going to win. So remember that and last but not least i have prank kids now i made this video pretty quick just because we have talked about side decking stuff before prank kids is not really something i talked about outside of how to beat the deck and overall all this stuff you guys you should know but this is just to re you know like re-emphasize proper side decking because i myself I need to remind myself of this every single day that i play Yu-Gi-Oh for the rest of my life and i say that because my side decking is not the best I have asked so much help of so many better players than me, so many more intelligent players than me. How do I side deck? What is your advice? Never be afraid to ask people that. Trust me, like you, the advice they give you is, you know, priceless. It helps so much. Uh, but anyways, lastly, prank kids. So this deck is something you're going to see on every level of competitive play, whether it be locals, regionals, uh, YCS, etc. This deck is crazy. I think this deck is insane. However, this deck does fall to some common things that most people do play. Again, evenly matched. The whole point of this video is that evenly is a broken trap card. And yeah, you should be playing in your side deck. Yeah. So there's that. There's also the fact that this deck loses to floodgates like goes and match a rivalry of the warlords. We've talked about these over and over again as some of the best side deck cards in the game. And what I really like about these cards is that they really shut down this deck. They really hurt this deck because they need multiple attributes multiple types to you know get rolling and they're all different types all different attributes so floodgates like that blow them out cards like silent graveyard same thing shut off the graveyard cards you know that would just prevent them from getting any of their effects off like dweller etc you know anything that just stops them from the graveyard you know that's great and all however these are not really cards you're gonna side against every matchup however i feel like depending on your deck rivalry could be really solid now, here's the problem with rivalry though Rivalry sucks against Altergeist. Rivalry sucks against Thunder Dragons. Rivalry sucks against Rongo because they're pretty much all warriors. I found that out the hard way. I thought, oh, I'm all slick. You know, I got a rivalry. And then I realized, God, they're all warriors. When do I flip this? And yes, you flip it when Summon Sword comes out. But still, 
God, it sucks. Like, my God, it sucks. Like, it was not that good for me at all. Goes in as a really good card, destroys Alter Guys, etc. Same thing against Prank Kids. What I like about Rivalry and Gozen, though, they're pretty solid against Sky Strikers if you flip them preemptively. However, if you flip Rivalry at the wrong time, they're just going to keep trading out machines, you know, all the Sky Strikers and machines. But flipping Goes and flipping Rivalry at the right time is a great way to, you know, be ahead of your opponent. So, I really do like that. And I think overall, what we can take away from all this is if you were to make a side deck of 15 cards, which is three copies of every card, I think the best side deck cards you could play are three Twin, three um, Evenly, three Lancia, and then at that point, I would say depending on your deck, now this is just keyly depending, you could play the Gamma Package, you could play Impermanences, you could play Bells, depending on whatever you want to play in the hand trap uh, domain, you could play Prankatops. The thing, the one thing I'll say though is I don't know if I would side all nine of those, if I would side the three Prankatops, the three Twin, and the three Evenly. I think at that point you're overdoing it. I think that you need to have a little more variety, so cards like, um, you know, depending if you have certain matchups you want to side things in, like Super Poly against Thunder Dragons, Mind Control against Thunder Dragons, um, you know, depending on what you play. Since I play Thunder Dragons, I play cards like Mind Control, I play cards like uh, Book of Eclipse, etc., you know, for the Mirror, stuff like that. I think it all just comes down to your deck. But I think overall, what I want you guys to remember is that this format is a good format. There's a lot of different decks, there's a lot of different ways to side deck get the most bang for your buck get the most valuable cards you can that will work against a plethora of matchups don't focus on one matchup focus on them all put as many uh what's the word as many i'm really bad with words sometimes but you need as many cards that are flexible i guess i guess flexible is the right word as many flexible cards as you can that help you you know go against every deck of the format not just one you get value against one matchup you get value against another matchup and overall you built a side deck that when it's time for game two and three you know what to side in you know what to side out and you know what cards are good against the deck and you know how to beat the deck and i think overall that's the best way to play this game in this format so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video i know the discussion was a little random but get the most value out of your side deck the importance of side decking this format how to side deck properly this format that's what we're here to learn that's what we're here to do and we always want this skill because it's something that we're going to use every day we play Yu-Gi-Oh, every event we play Yu-Gi-Oh, and i think overall together we're going to learn more by making videos like this and through playing the game and that's what we're going to do but anyways how do you side deck properly this format? Do you feel, do you agree with me? Do you feel that playing cards that ha that overlap against multiple decks is the way to play? Or do you feel that there's other ways to do it? Do you dedicate certain cards to one, one match? And are you okay with that? If so, why? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this format, how you side deck against this format, and how you combat the format. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in more videos coming soon. Anyways, I hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.